venerable religious and dear parishioners, our eyes are on the kingdom today, the kingdom of heaven, where the saints reign in glory. Let's keep looking up to heaven because we are destined to be there ourselves one day, not guaranteed, but destined. In other words, there's a throne and a crown waiting for us as long as we persevere. We honor in a special way all of the canonized saints and all of those saints who lived heroic lives, and there are thousands and thousands of them, tens of thousands, probably more than that. Well, let's even say, let's go into the hundreds of thousands and more. And obviously there cannot be a feast day for each one because there are only 365 days a year. So the church gathers all of the saints' feast days together into one every year on November 1st. And so we honor all of those who lived that heroic life, all those who merited the title of canonized saints. We are commanded to honor with particular veneration those who have been canonized by the church. That's an infallible act guaranteeing that this person lived a life of heroic virtue and is in heaven and is, an, is a special intercessor for us with God. But more broadly speaking, we honor also all those who got to heaven but didn't live as heroic a life. They died in God's grace and they took care of their purgatory time however long that had to be. Tomorrow we're going to go down to the depths of purgatory on All Souls Day and try to understand better what terrible sufferings those souls go through. They have to be sufficiently purged and cleansed in order to go into the all-pure, all-holy presence of God. Purgatory only makes sense who is spotless enough to go straight to heaven right after one dies? Very few. So, as I said, we, we will descend to purgatory, but even throughout November we have our special thoughts and prayers for our beloved departed. We'll lead those after Mass every day, beginning, of course, today. But we honor these who have finished their purgatory time and are in heaven, for they have gained a throne and a crown as well. We don't know exactly who they are. We don't have the sentence or the, or the pronouncement of canonization for them, but nevertheless we know that there are many there. And this is our day to celebrate their feast. A great point we must remember when we think of the saints is that all of us are called to be saints. Not just to barely squeak by, not just to try to stay out of sin, but to positively be, try to become saints in our daily lives. And Jesus laid that obligation on us in the Sermon on the Mount. Read about it in the first three chapters of St. or rather the chapters 5, 6, and 7 of St. Matthew's Gospel. And we read our Lord's words, Be ye perfect. That's a command. That's an obligation. And everyone who is baptized has that obligation. Even more so those who are priests and religious, for they are through their vocation committed professedly to a life of sanctity. But it doesn't stop just with them. It doesn't hold true just for them. It holds true for all of you. The question Jesus will ask all of us at our particular judgment is, 
Did you try to become the saint that I wanted you to be? Did you take that command seriously to strive for holiness? So what does that mean? It means obviously to overcome sin. The more sin we can eliminate from our lives, the holier we are. Two words to keep in mind as we strive for holiness, quantity and quality. Quantity, as we grow through life, there should be more acts of virtue, more efforts made to practice virtue. And in practicing virtue, we overcome sin, we overcome faults that we know are displeasing to God. This is why a saint is so pleasing to God. The more holy he or she becomes, because he or she is eliminating from his or her life, those things that are displeasing to God. And so same is true for us. But it's not just quantity that's important. It's also quality. And by quality, I mean how much love of God we have in our daily actions. If there's no love of God in an action, if we're doing it just because it pleases us or just because we have to or because we want to please somebody else, well, our reward will be only in this life. But if we do it for the love of God, then there's supernatural merit involved. There's a supernatural reward. So again, quantity is not enough. Quality is necessary. I remember, I'm sure you all remember the story of the Pharisee and the publican who were, you know, went into, temp into the synagogue to pray. And what did, the, what did the Pharisee say? Oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of men. I fast twice, twice a week. I pay tithes. I do this. I do that. Doesn't that sound like a list of his quantities? But he was missing the quality. The love wasn't there. The humility wasn't there. So quantity is not enough. The quality needs to be there. And how much can we grow in that quality? I think St. Louis Marie gives us a, St. Louis Marie de Montfort gives us a wonderful explanation in his book, True Devotion to Mary. He was talking about the love that Our Lady had in all of her actions. And he compared that with St. Uh, St. Lawrence being martyred, being fried, or, you know, burned on a gridiron that was red hot. And he says, as great as St. Lawrence's love for God was in laying down his life, Our Lady's love was even greater in her ordinary actions. So you see, we're capable of always getting better and better in the quality of what we do. Make a resolution every morning with your morning prayer. Some good resolution to overcome a fault or sin of yours by practicing the opposite virtue. This is what all the saints did, and this is why they advanced in holiness. We, too, need to advance like that. And if we start off the day without any good resolution, chances are we are likely to go backwards. Because we weren't prepared. We had nothing positive in place. What am I going to do today to become more pleasing to God? So you see the value of that. And then the saints would try to even examine themselves around midday about how well they're doing on their resolution. And in the evening, examine their day in general. It works. It really does work. So we have to put forth the effort. I'm reminded of what St. Augustine says. He says, speaking of God, he says, He who created you without any cooperation on your behalf will not save you without any cooperation on your behalf. You, so we had no choice to come into existence. That just happened. But to get to heaven... We absolutely have to involve our choice. We have to put forth our efforts 
relying on the grace of God. And it's a, it's God providing his grace, but us begging for God's grace and also making our own daily efforts. There's something else that God does to help us to become saints. And it's the, typically the thing we would not choose. It's the crosses that he allows to come into our lives, the sorrows and sufferings, the things we would have never chosen for ourselves. But those crosses, when we bear them in the right spirit, they are God and our Blessed Mother trying to, Form us into something greater than we would be on our uh, on our own, by our own efforts, of course, in God's grace. But it's those sufferings that help us to really grow spiritually. This is why God allows them. So maybe your idea of being a saint is I'll just be you know reach this level. But God loves you so much. He says, no, I don't want you to just be satisfied with that level. I want you to be a saint like this. It reminds me of a saying from C.S. Lewis. He says, I'm paraphrasing it here, but he says, God wants to come and live in your soul and build up an edifice in your soul. He's meaning build up a, a holiness in you. You thought that you were going to be a little cottage, but God was building a palace in your soul. So don't be content with just a little cottage of holiness that you can have. Allow God to build the palace of whatever kind he wishes to make in your soul. And that's what you will enjoy for all eternity. Don't forget our blessed mother is our spiritual mother. We honor her as the queen of all saints. And she is keenly involved in our spiritual lives. As St. Louis de Montfort says, just as a mother forms her children in raising them and educating them, so our Blessed Mother does for us. Trust her. She knows what she's doing. She's trying to build that image of Christ in your soul, helping you to become a saint. Trust her. Trust God. And let us be thankful for all of those mighty intercessors, more than we could ever begin to count, the angels and saints who are awaiting us in heaven, urging us on, praying for us, interceding for us. May we be with them happy forever in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.